You know, the thought just occurred to me, if the phrase, Hell hath no fear like a woman's scorn could be summed up into a movie, it would probably be this one. Oz the Great and Powerful. So Oz the Great and Powerful stars James Franco, Mila Kunis, Michelle Williams, and Rachel Weisz, and it follows the tale of the titular character named Oz, as he is whisked away as a con man to the magical land of Oz, where he is prophesied to become the wizard of Oz and free the land from the Wicked Witch. Now before I go in depth about my thoughts on the movie, let me just go ahead and accept the context of where I'm coming from with this. Now. I saw The Wizard of Oz a long time ago when I was a little kid, maybe around in middle school. But the thing is, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I mean, it wasn't one of those, Wizard of Oz was not one of those movies that I saw as a kid that I just obsessively watched over. I wasn't really attached to it as a kid. I grew up on stuff like Mary Poppins, Brave Little Toaster, Toy Story, those kinds of movies. But Wizard of Oz just never really caught around for me. I don't know what it was. My parents just never really showed it to me as a kid. Maybe they did. I just don't remember. It's been so long since I've seen it. I don't really remember how the film plays out. I mean, I know about the characters. I know about Dorothy. I know about Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, the Scarecrow, the Wicked Witch of the West from the classic film. I know about Glenda. I know about everything from the original movie. But the problem is, is that I don't remember how the film plays out in my head. So I would have to see the film again in order to really put the pieces together. So going into this movie, I'm going to this with practically zero nostalgia for the original. I'm just taking this movie as its own thing. So based on that notion, what do I think about Oz the Great and Powerful with pretty much zero nostalgia? Honestly, I'm really surprised at how much I enjoyed the movie. I mean, it's not perfect by any stretch, but I would say it's fairly, I would say I would recommend people to see it at least once. Alright, so now that I set up the context for the review, let's go ahead and get into what I think is the good and a little bit of the bad of the film. I thought Sam Raimi did a very admirable job in terms of adapting a very uh, iconic fantasy land like the Land of Oz to the big screen again. One of the coolest things I actually found about the movie, and I knew about this going into it, was that the film starts out actually in the original 4 by 3 aspect ratio that the original Wizard of Oz filmed in, or at least the opening sequence in, and then once it actually came to the Land of Oz, it's panned out to be widescreen, just like the original one did, which I thought was a nice little homage. And for those of you who are much more familiar with the film than I am, you might be able to pick on some subtle references that the film actually has to the original Wizard of Oz. Now, the acting in this movie is probably my only major criticism with this film. I mean, Yes, there are some points where the actors themselves do a very good performance, and I re and I enjoy what they were trying to convey. But at some other times, the acting came off as a little awkward. Because James Franco himself, I thought, was probably the most hit and miss out of everyone in the movie. Granted, I still liked what they did with Oz overall, but there were some points where I thought his dialogue was either very, very convincing or incredibly awkward to deal with in terms of being on screen. So I have to say his performance is mixed at best. I don't think it was flawless, but I guess that's sort of playing up the con man issue. So I'm, I'm moving towards that criticism with a little bit of hesitation, but it's something I feel like has to be addressed. Michelle Williams, Rachel Wise, and Mila Kunis all gave very uh, believable performances, I thought. I mean, granted, some of the dialogue was a little bit awkward, not so much to James Franco's degree, but I will say it looked like they were all having fun with their roles. I mean, the characters they got to play are some of the most iconic in cinema history, and I imagine, and it really showed that they were having fun with their roles, especially Mila Kunis and what she became. It seemed like she was having fun. And James Franco looked like he was having fun as Oz as well. So I can say that it may not have been the best performance, but it looked like they were having fun with their roles. And so one of the things I love the most about this movie is the fact that it showed the origin story of the Wicked Witch. As a kid, when I heard about the Wicked Witch, I always asked people, why is the Wicked Witch so bad? 
And people will say, well, she's just evil. She's just a wicked witch. And so, but that, for some reason, was not a very good explanation for me. I needed a reason for why she needed to be bad or what caused her to be so bad. And this movie gave that explanation to me, and I found it to be very satisfying. And it was really cool to see the origin of such, a, such an iconic character, because everybody knows about the Wicked Witch of the West. Everybody knows about the Wicked Witch of the East. Well, at least her fee once Dorothy's house falls on her. Yeah, not exactly a pleasant way to go out. And what I liked about this is that I know certain elements of The Wizard of Oz, like how the Wicked Witch melts whenever you see water pull on her. There's a sweet little nod if you were able to pay attention to that. And I apologize if that's a bit of a spoiler. Another thing I find to be a nice positive with this movie is its actual presentation. The Land of Oz looks stunning. It looks gorgeous. If there's one thing that Sam Raimi knows how to do well, is to make his production in his movies off the walls awesome. And that is, the Land of Oz is so bright and colorful and alive, and it feels so... You really get the sense that it feels like a magical world, and you're just stepping into the land of Oz. And it was so cool to sit there and just be in the theater and just be immersed in the land of Oz, meeting all these little fun creatures, going to these different little places and towns, meeting all these different kinds of people. You felt like it was a complete world, and you wanted to see more of it. One common complaint I've been hearing about the movie in general, at least from other YouTubers, I won't name names out of respect, is that the Land of Oz itself does not look like the original Land of Oz that was presented in The Wizard of Oz in the 1939 version. Now, I have three points of rebuttal to go against that idea, which personally is, I find, a little ridiculous. Number one, Wizard of Oz was made over 70 years ago. Of course, it is not going to look exactly the same. The idea of you perfectly recreating Oz in 2013 as opposed to 1939 is completely ridiculous. It's not going to look the same at all. Two different directors, two different, completely different eras of filmmaking. You can't go into this world expecting it, or this movie expecting it to look the same. It's completely ludicrous to expect something like that. Number two, this movie is a prequel, and by the very definition of it being a prequel, it is going to look different. It is going to look indifferent in tone and nature of the land itself. There is no way that the world is... I mean, Land of Oz is not static. Things don't stay the same, but in terms of narrative and story being the same from one place to another, in terms of two stories happening from a different time period. This takes 20 years before The Wizard of Oz, so there's going to be things that change. I mean, characters change. People, in terms of their dominance over certain regions, change. So, by very nature of it being a prequel, it has to be... There has to be certain circumstances that take that set up the narrative for The Wizard of Oz. That's the nature of how it's supposed to work. Number three, Warner Brothers owns the copyright to the original Wizard of Oz. So, legally, there is no way Disney could have, and Sam Raimi for that matter, could not have recreated the Land of Oz perfectly, even if they wanted to. So, I mean, they could make homages, and they could replicate it as much as they could without actually infringing on it, but there's no way they could make an exact duplicate. I mean, that would take so long. Not to mention, it would go over its budget insanely. Movie. So, overall, good characters, hit or miss acting for the most part, great presentation, cool origin story. So taking the movie as a whole, I would say Oz the Great and Powerful is worth watching, but it's not perfect. So everybody, that is my review of Oz the Great and Powerful. I hope you enjoyed this review. And just one more thing, if I sound a little bit quieter in this video than my last few videos, let me just make this clear. I'm recording this in like 4 or 5 in the morning, and I really don't want to make my dad up because he's asleep, and I just don't want to disturb him and just be respectful to him. And so this is kind of, and I'm a little tired being this up this late. So I'm just trying to get this review to you out and trying to keep to my word of this one day, one new review challenge. And so I will be back with my next review on Monday. And so until next time, everybody, I'm Perry the One-Arm Legend. You name it, I can play it.